What's up guys? So as far as how I get my sound, I've got one microphone directly above the drum set and then I've got another one in front of the bass drum. I turn both of those on and then I press record. So I hope you guys got something. <laughs> What's up, YouTubers? Hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. I do get asked quite often about how I get my sound and why I've chosen to go with a two mic setup. What microphones am I using? What software am I using to edit it? What plugins am I using? So I wanna make a video for you guys just showing you exactly how I get my sound, but almost more importantly, I wanna tell you why I get the sound that I'm going for or why I try to get the sound that I'm going for. So before we even dive into the microphones and the preamps and the plugins, let's talk about why I've chosen to go with a two mic setup. First of all, I'm an educator. I like to teach. Now when I'm making videos and I'm teaching drums, I'm obviously switching back and forth between speaking and playing. And what I don't want is I don't want to be speaking to you and you're hearing the room and you're feeling like you're in the room with me. And then as soon as I go to play, it's instantly this studio sound that you know, okay, now you're detached from me. I'm trying to bring you into the world and make you feel like you're sitting in the room with me and I'm truly teaching you. When you mic every drum individually and you get your drum sound from those mics and then you just bring in a little bit of overhead to sweeten the sound, it's a very direct sound. It almost takes the room itself out of play. But when you get your drum sound from one single overhead, that's getting the entire room and that's giving you the experience as the viewer that you're really in the room with me. The other reason I chose to move to a two mic setup was because I was struggling with my dynamics and I was fixing my personal dynamics in the mix. Oh, the snare's too loud, I'll just bring that channel down. Oh, the kick needs to be a little louder, I'll bring that up. Hi-hat's too loud, bring that down. And floor tom, that hit was a little weak, let's bring that up. I was fixing everything in the mix. When you have a single overhead, however you play, that's how it gets recorded. So please don't think that I think a two mic setup is better than having four mics or 10 mics or 20 mics. I don't think that at all. It just works best for what I'm trying to do as an educator. And it also works best for me trying to improve my personal dynamics and my personal sound on the instrument. I really love knowing that as I'm listening back and I'm watching the video back, if the ride symbol is too loud, there's only one answer. Play the ride quieter, Johnston. <laughs> now let's talk about the microphones themselves. Both of my mics are the same. So my overhead and my bass drum are the exact same mic and they actually come from a matched stereo pair. And if you don't know what a matched pair of microphones is, it just means that they were actually created, physically created at the exact same time and they were tuned to be exactly the same. This isn't all that important for how I'm using it because I'm going with an overhead and a kick, but if I was using them as dual overheads, it would be extremely important. And the microphones that I use for overhead and kick are the Audio-Technica AT5045. Now if you start typing into Google right now and looking up those microphones, yes, they are very expensive. But keep in mind a couple things. One, I do this for a living, so I want to have very nice microphones because it's representing my personal brand. Two, I only have two, so I think it's extremely important to have high quality microphones. Now, even though these microphones look like small diaphragm condenser microphones, they're not. This specific model, the AT5045, actually has the largest diaphragm in the entire Audio Technica lineup, and that allows me to capture the largest spectrum of sound. They also have a really high SPL, sound pressure level, which is extremely important when you're miking drums because our instrument is extremely loud. Now, both of those microphones are both going into two Neve 1073 preamps. Once again, very expensive preamps, but worth it when I only have two channels and this is what I do for a living. From there, I go into an interface and that goes straight into my computer via USB and that's how I get my microphones into my computer. So let's track some drums, completely raw, no effects, no EQ, no compression. We'll get into the computer and then I'll show you how I mix my drums. All right, now all the drumming you just heard was completely unmixed. So let's start mixing that audio. We're gonna jump into Pro Tools. And I usually just mix one track at a time. Luckily, it's only two tracks. So I've got kick and snare. So we're gonna bring up, we're gonna solo out the kick track. No effects whatsoever. 
So what I have here is I've got a compressor and then two EQs, and I'll explain why I have two of the same EQs. Very basic compressor, and the EQ is actually quite simple as well, just modeled after some Neve EQs. So I compress my kick or my signal first because the compressor will affect the actual sound and the EQ of everything. So I want to EQ a compressed sound instead of compressing an EQ'd sound. So let's turn this compressor on. And I don't want to squash the sound, I just want to even it out a little bit. I'm actually kind of digging that already, just at about maybe negative 14 dB. We've got a fast attack, a fairly slow release. Yeah, I'm actually good with that. That's better than this, where you can't hear anything. So right around negative 13, negative 14. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and EQ a little bit. So what I do is I find the worst frequencies possible and I take them out rather than just trying to always add EQ. So in this case, I'm, I know between 475 and about 550 is where the bad frequencies of my bass drum live. So I'm gonna jack that all the way up and turn this on. Woo, there you go. About 492 hertz, I'm gonna bring down, take about seven dB out and all of a sudden the bass drum sounds way better. I really don't feel like I need any extra high-end click, so I'm not gonna bring in any highs. I just need a little more thump, and I've already got some here at about 66 hertz. Yeah, right around there, maybe just three dB, and then we're good. Now the reason I have this second EQ is just in case I wanna do more changing than this, but that was more than enough, so I'm good with that. Then I'm going to solo the overhead. We'll give that a listen. This is completely raw. Now it's gonna sound like buttered ass. And the reason why it sounds like buttered ass with such an expensive microphone is because those expensive microphones capture everything. So cheaper microphones are actually pre-EQ'd for you and they make it very easy. You just put them up and it's like, oh, that sounds great. But you don't have a lot of flexibility because it didn't capture anything. It didn't capture as much frequency range and it also decided what your microphone was gonna sound like. With expensive microphones, they're very honest and they capture everything. So they're really easy to manipulate even though they don't sound great right off the bat. So, there you go. It doesn't sound bad, but it's not where I want it to be. Now the first thing you'll see here is I've got a Neve preamp. Well, I'm already using Neve preamp, so why have one of these? I actually don't use it at all. You can see it's totally turned off, zero dB. I just have it for phase because sometimes I need to turn the phase switch on or off. Uh, because I am not the greatest at getting my microphones in phase with each other. So uh, let's start with our compressor. Let it breathe a little bit more than that. I'm actually totally happy with that. On and off, off. Yeah, I'm good with that. I'm gonna EQ that. So once again, I go to my mids and I just jack up between 400 and 600. That's where all the bad sounds of drum sets live. So I'm gonna turn this on. That sounds pretty bad right there. So I'll pull that out. Now if you go too far, it just sounds wrong and, and thin. So I can't pull out too much of it. Sounds good. Highs for cymbals is gonna be anywhere between 5,000 Hertz and about 8,000 Hertz. So uh, I might bring in a little bit of that. literally like one dB. And then the low that I wanna bring up is for the snare drum and the tom. So instead of doing it at 60 hertz, it'll probably, because I only have one microphone, I'm gonna do it somewhere between like 110 and 130.
right around there. And then right here, I'm just getting rid of anything lower than 40 hertz. Now this guy right here, this is just what it says, shimmer and thickness, so high end and low end. I just use it as a finishing touch if I need it. I definitely don't think I need a more high end. Nope. So maybe just a little low end. Kind of round it all out. All right, now I bring in the bass drum. Now this is both tracks together. Dig it. All right, and then I just go to my master channel. This is where I would do any final compression, final EQ. I might put the tiniest bit of compression on the entire mix just to make sure that it's all nice and even. So you can hear, see it's only doing about one to three dB of compression. It just smooths it out a little bit. And I honestly don't think it needs any extra EQ, so I'm not gonna do anything there. And then the last thing I have is the Abbey Road vinyl plug-in and this just gives it a little extra sauce. So this is off and then on. All right guys, so I hope that helps and I hope it lets you in a little bit on how I get the sound that I get. And most importantly, like I said in the beginning of the video, why am I going for that sound? Why am I using two mics when, since I have a microphone endorsement, I could use lots of mics. It's because I want a natural sound like you're in the room with me. And I think that works best for educational stuff. Also, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do more stuff like this. Would you like to see this same type of video with much more affordable microphones? Would you like to see how I make these videos and the cameras I use and the lights I use and the color correction and the editing that I do? If you want to see more of this stuff, just let me know in the comments below. So once again, I hope you got something out of this. Please hit the subscribe button and please hit the notifications button because that's how you'll know that I got a new video coming out. Until next time, peace.